welcome to my garden. So uh, for for the new subscribers that you you're new to my channel, I just wanted to uh, give you a quick background that we are living in France, Castres, France. This is in southwestern part of the France, and uh, you know I'm gardening in a, a zone 8B as my, as far as my research to compare to the USDA zone. So we are originally from Colorado, but we simplified our lives. We moved to France, and uh, so I'm spending most of my time gardening nowadays. And uh, thank you again for all the new subscribers, and thank you for supporting my channel. So today I wanted to do a few different things, and I wanted to take you along with me to show you everything that I'm doing. Um, so I'm uh, going to plant this group of plants here, and I wanted to talk about. Also, I have another batch of roses that are going to go into my garden, and I think after this one I might try to grab a couple of more things before the bare root season is out, because after March... Um, we, I believe we can't order bare root uh, roses anymore. Uh, the season is out. After that, we have to purchase uh, roses potted in the pots, which are twice more, as more expensive. So if you have a chance to get bare root roses in this season, do so. Otherwise, it gets a little more expensive. You can get them. I mean, it's not a problem. If it's not a problem for you, good for you. But for me, f for uh, this size of the... Um, for me, for this size of the garden, I need quite a few plants, and a lot of times it gets very difficult to fill everything. So for me, I have to find the best ways and be creative to get the good prices that I possibly can. So uh, David Aston Roses, let's just talk about them. So I got a um, bunch of uh, David Aston Roses again, and I, I'll show you the list, and I'll show you what they look like. So they usually I've been they usually come in a great great condition and I can see very nice rooting system here. I have probably one two three four five four no six here I believe six roses here and I'll go over the list and I'll show you and I'll tell you what what I have. Um, actually, one of them it's not David Aston I believe this time and. I'll talk about that. But anyway, it looks like I have uh, six, seven, eight roses here that I'm going to plant right after this video because uh, you guys have seen me plant so many roses and I'm not going to do that in the video, but we'll do the rest of the stuff in the video. But just wanted to show, tell you really quick what I have. So I have cor uh, Rose Florentina and that's the climbing rose. It's a beautiful uh, red, deep red color climber and I think I'm going to plant that uh, by the fence, uh, fence in between us and the neighbor, and I think that would climb up on the trees. I can climb them on the trees, train them, train them over the trees, and also help help them to climb over the climb over the fence. And so, um, and then I have Claire Austin. Now, Claire Austin is usually a very beautiful um, white variety rose, and it's a climber. But it, uh, at this um, site where I ordered my roses, which let me show you, if you are in this area and you can order in Europe, they are excellent, actually, excellent company. I ordered uh, several times from them. Uh, they're in Germany and um, Rosenschulstange, I think, how you say that. I'm not sure. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I've ordered from them several times. They came in a great condition, great quality, very quickly, so I highly recommend them. And uh, so one is the Florentina, as we spoke about, talked about, um, which is a climber. The second climber I have is the Princess uh, Margarita. And uh, Crown, Princess Crown Margaret, I believe. Let me... Crown Princess Margarita. So Crown Princess Margarita has a beautiful apricot color, full double uh, flowers, large, beautiful. And they actually take uh, part shade really well, what I understand. So what I'm, I'm going to uh, plant them by the arch. I don't know if you can see by the deer there. I had a clemata growing on that arch there by the um, deer. St uh, sculpture right there but what I did is when I when I was trimming all my clematis I moved the clemata on this tree where I have a um, uh, kind of a net uh, that I wrapped over the tree trunk uh, I planted by there and I'll show you in a minute because
because we have to go on that side um, uh, to talk about my project there in a little bit. But um, anyway, I planted Climata there. So I moved the Climata because I think it will see a little more sun. Uh, the Climata, as you know, they like to have their flowers in the sun, but the roots in the shade, and we need to keep their roots cool. And so I think having the roots to be closer in the shade and having the flowers be in the sun, it probably do a lot better than in a filtered sun right there. So uh, we'll see how they do. Sometimes you just have to find the best places for them. And, uh, you know, a lot of times with the plants, you can think about, okay, they will do great here, they will do great there, and you will plant them. But sometimes uh, over time, we realize that, you know, they it wasn't really great place for them. And so we just have to tweak them and try to give them a little better spot for uh, for them to thrive. And basically, that's what I did because they because this Climata has been there, and I think it's called Nelimosis, if I want to say, if I'm saying it correctly, I can't remember the variety very well, but I think it's Nelly Moses. I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> I'll double check. We'll put that on the screen. Anyway, um, I think it needs a little more sun than the spot that was in, and it's been there for a couple of years, and it's doing good, and it's coming back. It seems like very healthy, but just not really taking off, and a lot of times it takes a few years for the climbers to take off, so it just depends. Um, anyway, the second, the, the Crown Princess Margarita climbing rose is going to go on that arbor right there, and I think it's actually going to be great because I can, you know, this is where I come out, and I can see it. it. It will be beautiful on that arbor, I think, and it will go with all the colors because I have um, yellows and um, cream colors, blues, hydrangeas, and agapantas there. I think they all the colors will just play off each other really well. So and uh, so my other ones that I got is the Abraham Darby, uh, which is a really nice variety. I think it's the white and pink apricot colors. Um, the clear Astana, we, I stopped talking about it. I think I didn't go through with it when I was trying to explain. Clear Austin is usually beautiful white climber. However, I found in this company, clear Austin is um, uh, in, in a shrub form. So it will go up probably about a meter and a half. And so I'm actually excited because honestly, um, I do, it's hard to find many places to try climbers. And there's so many climbers that I'd like to have in my garden and try uh, have try to have experience with them and see what you know what they look like just out of all the curiosity however it's difficult to find places for them because they need structure for them to climb up and be supported so um, finding uh, clear Austin in a shrub form was actually very exciting for me because I can plant them anywhere in a shrub form. Uh, next one is a Gabriel Oak, which I have another one. I, this is the second one I pur beca purchased because they have a beautiful uh, deep fuchsia color. Um, and it's one of those, you know, dark colored ones, which I really like. It's just, uh, you know, I, I have some dark, but I don't have a lot of dark colors. So this one is, I think it's going to be really pretty. And this is one of the newest varieties of uh, David Austin roses, I believe. And so anyway, I got the second one. They, and I got also I purchased Lady of Sh uh, Shalot or Lady of Charlotte. Um, the uh, Lady of uh, Shalot is um, another beautiful, uh, very um, well-known variety of David Austin. You guys probably have seen. Uh, this particular this rose uh, in many videos etc lots of places a very uh, popular variety uh, it, it's supposed to get really big but I I think they're just gorgeous so I purchased the second one I do have one in my garden but I think I'm going to plant a second one as well got two summer songs uh, if you guys have been following my channel uh, my projects uh, by the north side of the house I planted a row of uh, summer song of roses but I think I'd like to have a couple of them here and I do have a spot for it right when you come through the gate I think it would be really pretty to have that color and a they have a wonderful aroma and so I, I think it would be really pretty to plant a couple of them there. The new variety that I ordered that I'm not very familiar but very curious is the one called the Meal on the Floss. And I think the flowers of this particular rose is not they're not very big. They're probably some small to medium-sized flowers. However, um, they're supposed to be really, really nice. They have a very distinct um, 
purplish uh, rose color lines on the edges of their petals uh, and that the rest of the petals are a little more pale color so it gives a really interesting illusion um, of the color I think it's more of a multicolor so uh, I'm very curious about this rose very excited the next one that is very new to me is the wild Eve and wild Eve uh, looks very very pretty they're supposed to get quite large and a bit leggy but I kind of like that look actually I love I always loved hybrid teas because there's you know very upright plants but I'm starting to really like the shrub rose uh, because it, particularly David Austin roses they are seem to me they I mean they have the shrub look but they do have the flower look like almost hybrid teas I mean they're almost as big as some hybrid teas and so and the fullness of the flowers are just very attractive to me so but having to for them to be um, kind of um, um, mingling or should I say um, getting mixed with other plants and poking their heads through here and there I, I don't know it gives that beautiful kind of interesting cottage look to me so I've been very curious about how everything huh intertwine, intertwine. <laughs> thank you George <laughs> I was trying to find the word intertwine and intertwine with uh, through all the other plants around it I think it would just look really really pretty so anyway this is the uh, my new batch of roses that I purchased that I'm going to plant literally right after this video and um, let's just talk about these plants that I'm planting today so I have a um, new plant here this is called in French is called uh, Chevrefeuille Marinella so this is a honeysuckle variety it's called Marinella now this is a very interesting uh, plant I'm very very curious about this plant and actually if I might order more to plant around now this is honeysuckle um, however honey this is not a major like a climbing honeysuckle where you know they can get really big really leggy uh, you need a big support because some of them can get very very tall and big and it's they're really uh, they need good support uh, sometimes they can be hard to deal with <laughs> if you don't have the um, support that they need to climb on and be trained on uh, so you can't just plant them anywhere but this particular one is uh, first of all this particular one is evergreen which is beautiful it has a nice thick leaves now this plant arrived today it doesn't look they, look in the, its great shape but I'm sure that you know as soon as I plant it will thrive um, it has a new beautiful growth on the sides now this this particular variety blooms all summer what I'm reading and what I'm researching we'll see sometimes you know you have to plant them and kind of learn about the plant and see they actually do what they you know everybody says they will do for you because everybody's uh, environment is different um, but this particular variety likes to have part shade they don't like to be in a full sun which is different for um, uh, for the um, most honeysuckles uh, honeysuckle climbers because they usually like to be in a full sun this one likes part shade and it stays evergreen and it blooms all summer and supposedly it has a, a beautiful beautiful scent so I'm excited about that and I have plenty of part shade areas in a garden that I probably can incorporate this now this one gets only a meter and a half tall so it doesn't get really tall you can have a nice obelisk or you can have a support if you like or you can just let it do its thing um, you know as a shrub looking kind of a plant um, in a part shade area so I'm very excited about this actually I'm going to plant this one by the pergola leg one of the legs and kind of let that um, be a support uh, so to speak for this plant and have it kind of trained on it and I thought you know when we sit around by the pergola it will be a uh, very nice aroma there which is always a plus so this uh, another plant that I'm planting here this one again arrived not too long ago um, that I need to plant this one is a Japanese maple another Japanese maple <laughs> Maria Smith <laughs> another Japanese maple <laughs> yeah, they are getting addictive she, she 
she messaged me last time and she said, Navar, be careful because they are very addictive. And honestly, I am getting addicted to this Japanese maple. There are some, so many gorgeous varieties out there. And it's just, they're amazing plants. If you don't have it in, in your garden, try to plant them. They're amazing. Now, this one is a red variety and it's uh, called Blood Good. And I'm going to plant this by the fence here. And I'll show you the minute we go on to that direction. Now, this variety it will get big. It's going to get about 15 to 20 feet tall, but I think it will work really well for us because it will give a nice privacy. And also, you know, even if it gets tall, it has a plenty of places there to get to, for, for that size of a, a tree. Also, having the red color, which will bring really beautiful red interest on that side. So I'm excited about this. Um, next ones that I'm going to plant today are Winter Orchid Erosima. Now, this is a wolf flower variety and if you guys remember in my other videos last year um, I planted erosimum here in this bed uh, they're actually starting to bloom look at that they're starting to bloom I'm really excited this this one's called um, bull moth I believe this ones are beautiful has that kind of a nice distinct lilac -y color. I have several in this area, um, so I'm excited about that. But this one has a very interesting variation of the flower colors. Look at that. It has a bit of an orange, peach, apricot tones into the pinks. So I'm excited. This one started blooming. You can see it's a little plug right there, but I really need to plant them and get them started because I think they, they're so ready to go into the ground. So I have three of them, which I'm, I think I'm going to try to to maybe group them together. And then uh, my other thing here is the scabiosa. Scabiosa plants, I am very excited. As I mentioned in my other videos, I really need companion, I, I need lots of companion plants actually in my garden because I do have lots of spaces for companion plants to the roses. So roses and hydrangeas, and I love those big showy flowers and all of that, but I think they need, I need more of a companion type flowers where I can, uh, you know, give that, beautiful look of you know symphony bring the symphony into the garden versus just solo plants and I'm hoping actually this one I might try to separate them we'll see I, I don't know until I take it or take it out of the pot and see because they look pretty big I wonder if I can um, separate them and maybe make two split them into two then then I will have four so which is great okay um, I need also to plant today two paniculata hydrangeas. Now, these are paniculata hydrangeas. Let me show you this. I can't tell you what variety this is because this was in our actually grocery store when I went to a grocery market, and it was only four euros. I couldn't resist that. I mean, four euros for the paniculata hydrangea, it's unheard of. And um, I... I couldn't pass it. Actually, I could have gotten more maybe. Uh, but I do need lots of hydrangeas. I think I'm going to incorporate more of the paniculata hydrangeas because they do love the sun. They bloom a lot. Uh, they have a nice long blooming time for the summer. Uh, and I think they would be really pretty, you know, to... Um, um, get incorporated into the garden with the other plants that I have. So anyway, I think I'm going to plant more of these, but these ones will go into my pergola area. So now, um, before I start, actually this one we can take with us. Here I have uh, mixed some uh, manure with uh, sand. So I have sand and manure here. And look, it's just, it's really nice. I, I think this is what I'm going to uh, mix in my soil when I plant these plants to give a good drainage because as much as I've, I've amended my soil so much, but it's still just the clay, I, it's just really hard to deal with. And so I decided that I have to incorporate sand a little more every time I plant or every time I try to uh, amend the soil as I go uh, to give a good drainage. And so that's what I'm going to do but let's take let's go ahead and plant the Japanese maple together and then uh, we'll go on that side and I'll show you what I'm going to do in that area as an improvement because this area really needs attention so take this my shovel and I need to take Okay. 
okay, so let me explain what's happening here. This area was one of the first areas that I started building, like started creating when I started this garden. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous videos, this area was the first part of my garden. So this is where I started. I started, you know, on the other side and started working my way out to this way and then started expanding my garden, you know, the other way to the rest of the areas so when I was creating this I thought it would be really nice to have the circle but I really didn't know how to create a great circle so my circle is not perfect which always bugged me after I learned how to do that um, so here I, I really like how it all turned out but um, in the beginning of time, when I created this circle, I lined it with this plastic uh, plastic um, edger here um, because I really didn't. For a, at that time, I couldn't really afford getting the bricks, and then um, I decided to wait a little bit and see what I really wanted to do. But I edged it with this plastic, which is keep breaking. Then, at our garden center just last year, I found these beautiful white bricks, and uh, I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is going to be perfect for this area," which unfortunately they were discontinuing these bricks and I they were able to contact the next branch and they were able to find everything that they could find in, in between two garden centers so they all brought it delivered it to our garden center here and it came out as not like 60 some bricks I think um, I thought it would be enough but I was actually I'm actually short five bricks as you can see because part of these bricks I utilized here in this area. So this area here, I also have was uh, lined with um, that plastic edger here as well. As you can see, this the edger is still kind of here, but I cut that from the outside so you can see very much because uh, I went right in the front, front of this um, edger. Uh, I lined it with these beautiful bricks. Now, after I got this done, and I love how this, is to, this has turned out. I don't want to modify this because I love the size. I love how it looks. Everything looks great. But unfortunately, I'm five bricks short on the other side. And so I really didn't know what I was going to do. I tried to talk to garden to the garden center and they said there is no way we can get more because it's just been discontinued. Um, so I decided, OK, let me just think about it. I will not do anything. And uh, just the other day, I had an idea to go ahead and make the circle smaller which is going to be the best solution what i'm going to do basically wrap something through this container i like where the container is create my circle go out as much as i want and create a nice uh, good lines of circle here i will bring it to about here here and uh remove all this uh, most of the uh, stones from the uh, the stepping stones because I'm going to use that for another project on the other side and uh, bring all the gravel in try to cut the liner and basically make a nice circle it's just a smaller size well when I do that it will also give me a little more planting area um, uh, because it will widen the uh, flower bed. So at that point, I'm going to create a nice formal edges here, which will, I think, bring more of a formality and make it really more structured area here, which is going to be great. So that's my, um, that's my project for um, coming weeks uh, or coming or, or even sooner. So uh, and uh, anyway, I'm really excited how to design this area. But for the for our uh, blood good Japanese maple is going to go right here. Check this out. So this is where I'm going to plant the Japanese maple. I think this is going to be gorgeous because look how beautiful our neighbor's garden has become. I, I think they did such a phenomenal job. Now it's all the grass is coming out and they did all this beautiful landscaping. But um, it will give us a nice privacy here. There is plenty of sun. It's perfect uh, environment, I think, for the Japanese maple. But also it will get really big and eventually all these trees have to go. You can see these trees are just really old and if, if we don't take them out they eventually will fall especially these two are 
it's scaring me all the time but the first thing we have to do is remove this large big tree in the front uh, we already saved half of it I think we are halfway hopefully we can save up a little more to get this big tree removed because I I have other I have um, plans for that small area there I really we already bought a shed that needs to go there a little garden shed for me which it will help me to organize all my gardening stuff into my shed um, and have a nice uh, just really nice area here um, perhaps maybe with containers I don't know but anyway um, so that's, that's kind of the plan but eventually this tree probably will be going and at that point I think Japanese maple as it grows it will kind of spread and make a nice big beautiful red canopy and the Sun kind of comes this way and I think it would the red would really shimmer under the sun and just glow I think it would be just so so beautiful here so anyway that's the plan and um, right here I had a job uh, I had a um, peony tree which actually I planted with my mom when they were here visiting and uh, this peony tree is beautiful it has a gorgeous white large large flowers uh, it's been you know they grow very slow but they been we planted uh, them here when hydrangeas was really small as they're getting bigger I felt like the uh, tree peonies will kind of get all um, um, you know choked by this uh, hydrangeas and then I have another you know I have a clematis here etc so it's just really running out of space for the to allow this tree peony to really thrive so I moved the peony tree here and it's looking really good there I think I have a couple of more there I have another one right here so I kind of spread them around a little forward to give them nice enough room for to for them to breathe but the tree a uh, Japanese maple will be gorgeous here so that's what my plan is and you can see some of the clematis um, are doing really beautiful like I went ahead and uh, trimmed in my last video you guys saw that I was trimming all the clematis and it's looking really pretty you can see how nicely I trimmed everything and they're so happy look they're all sprouting already look how beautiful they are so they're sprouting and I'm hoping for them to be trained on this obelisk here and in fact we just kind of cover this area so uh, I fertilized them uh, they're looking great and then I wanted to show you this other clemata that I planted uh, that I moved from the other arbor which I brought right here this area here and I think as the laurel petalums get uh, larger uh, it will create more shade for the roots of this clemata here and it, this clemata will actually look it actually is looking so nice already it's starting to come out looks like this might be very happy plant in this area I can see it's already liking it so it will climb this way and hopefully I can even create more room for it you know to to climb on and we'll just cover this but the Sun it will see quite more Sun here but the roots will stay in the shade which is very important for clematis um, let me go ahead and plant this one Japanese maple and then I think I might conclude the video here because I have so much planting and it would take forever to get everything done in my next video I might just go over and show where everything got planted before we start um, you know all the new planting <laughs> uh, uh, to plant all the new stuff but anyway I might show you how I get this project done um, in a maybe next next video we'll see as soon as I get this going we'll get that figured out but we'll get this done first first thing first this Japanese maple is really really small very small but it's so affordable to get small like this and sometimes when you plant smaller plants they acclimate a lot better and they take off a lot better this one is has lots of water inside um, but um, it's okay it will take a little time in a couple of years it will go it's not a problem
so this one is in and one of the biggest thing that I mean one of the things that I really enjoy about gardening is kind of watching everything grow and watching this tree to grow and get really big it's just amazing to me and I really really love watching the progress of in the garden um, so I think this is going to be gorgeous um, so what I use is just mycorrhizum fungi in a hole to help the roots develop um, nothing major and I did, did a little bit of an amendment into the soil soil is good just a little clay still and I like to amend them when I plant the uh, my plants so most of the uh, most of the uh, perennials that we talked about today, ex uh, in exception for the uh, honeysuckle, uh, the rest are all summer loving uh, perennials. So you can plant them all in the sun, in a sunny area. They will thrive and do really well. And that's what I'm going to do. Just kind of find uh, those little pockets of areas in the garden that you know are very sunny and uh, plant them in that area. Um, exception of hydrangeas, I might plant hydrangeas in a more of a, a little bit of a protected areas from the sun in the afternoon, like in more in a, maybe uh, by the pergola where it's a little more sheltered, just because uh, for the higher zones like mine is, you know, zone eight, sun can get really, really uh, harsh. Uh, in the afternoon, sun can get, can be really harsh on hydrangeas, even though they like sun. So that's what I noticed in my area. But anyway, they do definitely like to get quite a bit of a sun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I didn't do much of a planting except for the tree today, but I will go ahead and get lots of planting done right after this, where I spend more of the, most of the video talking about what I'm going to do. So, you know, it's just gonna, going to be a little different video today, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, don't forget to subscribe to my videos if you like them. Um, share with your friends, your gardening friends, and uh, have a wonderful day, wonderful week, and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.